Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, the home of slightly above average FPL content and today we have got for you a team selection video and transfers video for the game week 32 plus which I'm actually sort of prepared for today because I've sort of decided my team already I think I've done everything including my transfers um, maybe I just need to choose my captain that might tweak um, as we get towards the deadline but I'm pretty certain on this one so I'm actually confident going into this one as before um, prior weeks uh, well last week perhaps there was still other games to play and stuff and I still wasn't quite sure but we're, we're ready now um, so we're going to get into this video but before we do I just want to quickly say if you have not subscribed already please do consider subscribing I'm aiming to get 1,000 subscribers by the end of this season um, so I, I can only do that with your help so please please subscribe um, thank you for all your support so far but Let's keep it going. I love it. So let's um, let's go on to my uh, scores for last week. Um, thus far, because there is still a couple of games to play. So I'm currently sitting on 53 points, which um, which is slightly above average, um, with three players left to play. Not completely happy with my score here, but. Um, but what I can clearly see here is that defenders scoring very high, which is something to take out this. Trent Alexander-Arnold doing absolutely amazingly, um, getting that clean sheet and the and the uh, the goal as well from the free kick. He is so so valuable, um, and I'm really worried about um, the idea of letting him go. So I'm, I think he's got to he's got to stay. Um, Doherty clean sheet again. Unfortunately, no returns this time. Wambasaka smashing it with 11 points, absolutely brilliant. Salah on 11 points. Fernandez. I chose as my captain and I was really quite confident with Fernandez as a captain because I thought Manchester United would smash Sheffield United, which they did, but unfortunately none of those um, goals and assists came through Fernandez. So um, I'm going to consider myself quite unlucky there and I'm not going to be too disappointed with that captaincy shout because I still think it was the right one. Um, I just got a little bit unfortunate. I didn't expect Liverpool to win by such a large margin, which obviously happened. Um, Barnes uh, only played a, a few minutes at the end of the game. Dominic Cavett Lewin got nothing. Hotter again got nothing. So there's there's a few there's a few areas of concern I'd say in this particular team that I've that I had last week going forward. But I did score slightly above average, and I've still got a Bamyang to play um, this evening, so that could still work out. Nick Pope could get a clean sheet as well. Kevin De Bruyne, I'm not expecting too much just because um, it's a difficult game against Chelsea. Don't even know if he'll start to be honest. Um, but I'm not completely um, disappointed with my score, but I think there are definitely changes um, to be made. So let's move on to the team selection for this week. So, ah, okay, so I'm starting Pope again um, uh, in goal. Against Crystal Palace away, I think, again, he can keep clean sheets. Pope is just, his record is just fantastic, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. So I'm pretty happy to keep him. Um, Trent Alexander-Arnold. This is this is where the problem areas start because the game against Manchester City, Liverpool against Manchester City, is going to be a worry for a lot of people because obviously two massive teams playing against each other. Is it going to be a bit cagey? Liverpool could win the league in that particular game, depending on the results of the uh, these Chelsea against City game tonight. So um, depending on how that plays out, this could be a really important game for Liverpool. Um, and, and Manchester City as well might put out a quite strong side just to prevent... Liverpool from winning against them on that very day. Um, I think they'd, they'd probably want to do that. So so uh, that is a slight concern, but um, we'll move on anyway. Doherty, again, I'm very confident about against Aston Villa. Aston Villa have improved a little bit. They seem to have improved defensively a little bit and they're capable of scoring the odd goal that can wipe out a clean sheet. But I do still have confidence in Wolves. Um, Wolves' defensive record has been incredible. So um, I'm happy for... Doherty to stay in that team and um, hopefully shut Aston Villa out. Um, not sure about goal contributions, just because Doherty's playing more as a, a right wing back with a right winger ahead of him this last game. So Adam Traore was playing in the advanced position on that right hand side, whereas um, when there's a two up front for Wolves, Doherty often finds himself much further up the pitch. So I'm not sure how they're going to set up for the next game, but it, I don't know if it's going to mean good things or bad things for Doherty. But Either way, I'm confident the clean sheet. Wan Bissaka, I was incredibly impressed with last night against Sheffield United. Um, I think there's been a toss up for a lot of people whether it's Maguire or Wan Bissaka. They're the same price. Which one's the better Manchester United defender? Which I think you do need to have a Manchester United defender, but which one is it that you should pick? I think it's Wan Bissaka. I really liked how far forward he, he was getting yesterday and putting in a lot of crosses and um, trying to create a lot of chances. Um, whereas before, Wambasaka has often been a right back that sits deep, 
Maybe that's because um, of Greenwood who was playing ahead of him. Maybe Greenwood drifted in, allowed uh, Wambasaka a lot more space on the right. Whereas Daniel James perhaps may, maybe stays a little bit wider, um, blocking Wambasaka from advancing further up the pitch. I'm not exactly sure. I couldn't call that, to be honest. But I, d I was really impressed with Wambasaka, even though Harry Maguire did get that goal that was um, disallowed for the push. Yeah, so I'm confident with that. And then I'm going to go for a fourth defender this week because... As I've said in a couple of videos, um, it seems like defenders are absolutely smashing it at the moment. Um, it all seems to be all about the defenders. There's loads of clean sheets uh, points up for grabs. So let's try and let's try and capitalise them rather than taking a risk on a on a cheaper midfielder or or striker perhaps. So very confident going in with ourselves against Bournemouth. Bournemouth haven't scored yet um, since the break. So uh, although before the break they they were very capable of scoring, but I think. Newcastle have a very good chance of shutting them out again as they've, they've uh, Bournemouth have offered very little going forward so far. So, yeah, very happy to keep that. Um, moving into midfield, Kevin De Bruyne. Again, because of this massive game, it's a light, slight problem area, isn't it? So, But I, I, at the same time, I don't want to lose Kevin De Bruyne because he's got really good fixtures coming up. Uh, he's, he's not as much of a rotation risk, although I do see him potentially becoming a rotation risk as Manchester City have less and less to play for, more and more games to play. And they're, they're a bit loopy on their end, unfortunately, for them. But um, I'm keeping him anyway. If he gets points, he gets points. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I'm willing to just take that. And I don't think I'll be looking for Liverpool players for captaincy this week or, or Manchester City players. Either of those uh, teams in that game, I don't think are worth looking at for captaincy because I don't know how it's going to come out. And I think it's going to be quite cagey. Um, Salah in the midfield next. Um, absolutely fantastic this week. Uh, scoring the goal, getting the assist. Unfortunate to not get any bonus points, to be honest. But uh, still, 11 points, he did really well. So um, d d his, the temptation is there to keep him in the team, even though his next his, his game against Manchester City, uh, he's, 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 I don't know that he gets much out of that. And then after that, you know, we're talking big, big rotations. So. Yeah, it is, it's a, that's, a, that's a definitely a concern area, I would say. Bruno Fernandes, I'm still confident with. He played really well. The, the, every Manchester United attack, particularly in the first half of this game that just happened, um, Fernandes was in and amongst it. He was, he, was doing, he was doing everything. He was orchestrating everything on set pieces, um, on corners, blah, 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 blah. He, he's going to get points. This one blank against Sheffield United is, is not going to be an every week thing. So I'm, I'm more than happy to keep him on my team and see how he does. And then going up front, I've got Aubameyang um, against Norwich. The game I was looking at keeping him for. I don't know how he'll perform against Southampton. I'm hoping well. And then unless he does something magnificent against Norwich, I, I might have to consider shipping him on as well. But for now, um, I think that's a really good game for him to play. Uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin against Leicester. I'm, I'm not totally convinced he'll get anything out of it. But what I do like is that Richarlison was the person, the player who was subbed off earlier out of the two attackers in the, their last match. So I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin, if you play, he keeps playing 90 minutes. He keeps working hard, which he does. I do. I am happy to keep him if he gets returned. Brilliant. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But he's because he's so cheap. You know, it's, it's difficult for me to, to take him out. And his form before the break was phenomenal. So no complaints there. And then the, my biggest problem area, I think, is Hotta. Um, just because he's not getting in amongst the goals. He's getting subbed off every match. Last match, he played on the left wing rather than up front as a two, which I think might continue as, with the form of Adama. Obviously, Neto is, is starting to get a few minutes. So is Neto going to be... Um, a player that's gonna get some points uh, and, uh, and get some starts and stuff. I, I don't know. So, and just the fact that I don't own Jimenez is is worrying to me. So, that is the area I'm going to be attacking with uh, my free transfer. Obviously, you can see that I can't afford that with what I've got in the bank. So, there's going to have to be a make weight, and I think that make weight has got to be Mo Salah. So, these are the transfers I'm going for. So, Salah down to Martial. Martial. Hat-trick, absolute knee-jerk um, transfer. I'm not going to lie. I've already done this. It's already locked in. So, Martial is in. I really like Martial. He's playing up front. He's, he's, the quality of his, his finishing was really good. I really liked it. I really liked how much he was in the box and getting shots and stuff. And, and um, obviously, he got a hat-trick to show for it. 
So I'm really, really impressed with Martial that last game. And um, I do, I just, I've said this before, I prefer him to Rashford. If you're going to go for a Manchester United attacker or a third Manchester United player, I do think it's got to be Rashford, uh, no, sorry, Martial over Rashford. Just because Rashford's playing out on that wing um, without penalties. Uh, he doesn't score as many as Martial. And in fact, Martial now has the same amount of goals as Rashford. So you can't even really use that argument anymore, even with the penalties, which Rashford now doesn't have. Um, which is scored, I think, five of. So again, that was a huge uh, selling point for Rashford before, which I don't think is there anymore. So Martial, very happy to have him um, in midfield over Salah. Like I said, Salah might be rotation, playing against City this game. Um, I think 11 points Salah's got is a very good point to say, right, Thank you for all your service. Get out of my team. Martial's in. And of course, that allows me to upgrade Hotta to Jimenez, which is relieving, really relieving. Uh, Hotta, uh, Jimenez's high ownership, his consistent returns is really damaging me um, every single week. So I, I don't want to be without Jimenez any longer. I just don't think it's, it's sensible at all. And I've been hyping up Jimenez so much. Every video I've pretty much been saying Jimenez first on the team sheet, maybe with Bruno Fernandes. So to go without him um, would be hypocritical of me and, and me not taking my own advice, which I need to start doing more of taking my own advice because um, that's sort of how I, I need to play a little bit more rather than going for stupid punts that uh, don't pay off. So that is my team for captaincy at the moment. I've got it on Martial. Um, I don't know if I'll keep it that way. Martial with the hat trick, I think maybe he's going to continue that form. Now he's got, he's going to be playing with confidence. I like a player in form a lot, and there's no standout option really. The other option is maybe to go for Aubameyang against Norwich, but I want to see how he plays against Southampton first to see how, uh, what he does there, how well he does. Not even if he gets uh, a whole load of goals, but the amount of um, key passes he's creating, the amount of um, big chances, shots in the box, stuff like that. So I'm going to be looking out for that on Aubameyang tonight. And if it looks good, I could potentially switch the captaincy to him. But for now, um, it's very much on Martial. And um, yeah, I feel like now, now I've got Salah out, um, I've been able to redistribute the money a little bit. And I could, I've still got money in the bank, so I can continue to redistribute that money over the coming weeks. And potentially getting Son in for Barnes, um, who's on my bench. And... Um, yeah, really do something. Elsewhere on my bench, you've got McCarthy, who, um, I mean, I, I, I think Popal has, has a better chance than McCarthy to get clean sheets. So, yeah, Barnes, Egan, um, yeah, and Sheffield United, not looking good at the moment, to be honest, so not too confident there. And Jordan Henderson, who I just got in just because I, I I think he actually offers quite a lot for his value. Got a couple of um, good shots on target um, at the game against Crystal Palace last night as well. So, Henderson is actually not the worst player, but against Manchester City, no chance. He's, he's not playing. Um, so he'll stay on the bench. So yeah, yeah, pretty confident with my team now. Um, I think it's definitely in going in the right direction. And I think this is the kind of team I probably would have built if I was to play a wild card this week anyway. So um, in that sense, I think he's looking pretty good. So that is my team, how I'm lining up for game week 32 plus. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please leave a like. And as I said before, um, please do consider subscribing if you like FPL content. Plenty to come, as always, I'm actually smashing out the videos like every day, every other day. And there'll be another uh, FPL Game Week 32 plus preview video tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And other than that, I'll, I suppose I'll catch you later, mates. Goodbye. <laughs>